Uh, Pratik, let me start by asking you, because the big question now is what happens to the 200 plus items in the 28% bracket? The word from North Block is clear. It will be rationalized. It will be pruned. The question now is how much, how deep? What's your take? Yes, yeah, so uh, some of us were, have been advocating this for a long time. The 28% was not meant to cover so many items. It was only meant to cover a few items, which uh, Arvind Subramanyam mentioned in his report. Uh, now, uh, yeah. they need to cut it down for the real benefits of GST to translate. Now, which all items will, uh, will come down? Anybody's guess? Uh, my, guess, my sense is that mm. things like furniture, for example, uh, bags and cement and, yeah. you know, few, few air conditioner, for example, these are the things where we definitely need to uh, bring down the rate. Uh, now, uh, it's a tough call because uh, the revenue collection for the first mm. three months uh, has not been very encouraging to my mind and we have not even factored the refunds which will accrue to the exporters. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's a it's a it's a tough call, but uh, I I think that several of these items will come down tomorrow, and I think uh, that is very very uh, important for GST to be successful. Okay, money. Let me ask you now because our understanding is that at least a hundred plus items are up for review at the council's meeting tomorrow. Pratik, give us a, a glimpse of uh, what some of those items could be: plastic products, plastic furniture, electrical fittings, construction materials, sanitary ware, ceiling fans, consumer durables, goods that uh, uh, inputs as far as shampoos are concerned. I mean, the list is long, money. But if one were to go with the assumption that the government wants to try and alleviate the pain that's being felt on the consumer, then what would your best bet be? Okay. Uh, Shirin, first point I would like to mention is why is 28% creating so much of anxiety? And I think the real reason why it is creating so much of anxiety and why it is being debated is uh, many of these products, even earlier, if you add up the excise and VAT, have been at 27, 28, and 29%. Uh, at which point of time it was not ho as hotly debated as it is today. But what has happened in GST is that excise duty, which was a tax, which was never optical to any consumer, suddenly has become very optical. So 28% at an optical level does appear to be very, very high uh, for several products. And the list of products that you said we can add to it. So soaps are classified yeah. at 18%, but body washers are at 28%. Uh, there does not seem to be any reason why yeah. shampoo should be 28 percent now the way yes. i look at it is there are two choices that the government has got uh, and both are equally difficult choices the first choice and which is the easier mm. choice is to bring down a few items from 28 to 18. Uh, those which are consumed mm. by the common mm. man those which are mass consumption items the second point which uh, yeah. may be yeah. a difficult point is to have price slaps for each of these products so we can have shampoos which mm. are priced below 50 rupees and shampoos which are priced above 100 rupees. No, 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 money, money, money. That is, isn't that going to cause all kinds of confusion? I mean, that was the problem that we were faced with hotel rooms at seven and a half thousand rupees versus hotel rooms at five thousand rupees and so on and so forth. Uh, Hari Shankar Subramaniam, uh, do you, I hope that they're not going to go down to the, the idea that money was just proposing, which is link it to price bans, but Overall, how deep do you believe the cuts are likely to be in the 28% bracket? Price band will be a very, very bad idea. We've already seen what has happened in some of those categories. I don't think that's a, a way they should really go about. I, I believe there'll be a significant list of items, you know, and it, it could be a big list of items because there is a political expediency also here, you know, and this would be a nice way of saying something to the critics on the GST, you know. So 28%, like you alluded in the, even in the initial stages, was never meant to be 200 plus items, you know. It could have been at the most the, 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 10 the, or 20 remember, odd items. I remember the very first briefing, we were categorically told luxury goods yes. and sin goods. Sin that goods. was what 28% was about. Absolutely. And now it's 200 plus items. So 200 plus items was purely a mathematical calculation of what the effective rate was. And I do agree that optically excise was never visible to a consumer. So 28 looks like a very high percentage. Yeah. Right? So I believe it will be a significant cut. I really don't want to speculate which items will fall into yeah. it. Mass consumption, definitely. But even luxury, the term luxury 
no more applies to something ceiling like fan? an AC, a ceiling fan, washing machine? detergent, washing machine, refrigerator. I Body mean, wash. in an aspirational India, I don't think these are luxury items, you know. So I believe there'll be a significant list of items and we'll know in the next 24 hours what are those items. Okay, fair enough. Let's not speculate on what is likely to happen in the 28% bracket. We know that there is going to be a sharp rationalization, which products uh, we will know tomorrow. But Dinesh Kanabar, let me come to you on what our poll also shows up. Sir. And this is a poll that Dhruva Advisors has done across 150 CEOs. The pain is being felt on procedural issues, sir. Uh, the hope is that at least for SMEs, we move to quarterly reporting. The demand now is do it for everybody, do it for all of India Inc. So the procedural pain, what more do you expect and do you believe that tomorrow some significant decisions will be taken on that front? That's the hope. So if you look, go back to the poll, 50%, uh, almost 50% of the people who were surveyed went on to say that they were finding teething troubles, which was particularly with regard to implementation, uh, whether it is the inability to upload the forms on time, the matching aspect, the refunds, etc. And, and I think that that's a very, very big pain point. The 16% the, the which you see out there, which is on account of the fact that they believe that GST has been negative, are probably those people whose items fall into 28% demerit list, which was, as you rightly said, not expected to be such a long list at all. And that yeah. can get addressed. I think the teething troubles on the implementation is something which is a matter of time. I think what is more important is the ability to issue refunds, people's working capital not mm. getting stuck up. And yeah. finally, when the system goes totally live, the, the demands not being created only on account of inability mm. to match the, the input data inputs, really. Yeah. I think that's going to be a very, very important aspect to my mind. Okay, uh, Pratik, coming back to you now, you know, several other decisions uh, where we've had two GOMs, uh, a GOM to look at issues pertaining to the composition scheme, to restaurants, etc. Those are likely to be ratified as well by the GST Council. Should there be ITC benefits along with a lower rate of tax for restaurants or just bring down the rate of tax to 12% uh, uh, but do away with the ITC? Uh, that's the big question. And on the issue of refunds and working capital, because again, our survey shows up, the one that's been done by the that the working capital issue continues to be a big constraint. Yes, yeah, so on the restaurants, uh, uh, you know, uh, the rate is likely to be reduced to 12%. One would hope that this is with input credit. If they, if they don't do that, uh, you know, and they deny the input credit, it will lead to complications. It will also encourage more cash economy because they will tend to buy from people who would not charge tax. So that's really not a good idea when the government is looking at uh, promoting, uh, you know, digital economy and, and reducing the unorganized sector. Uh, so clearly, if uh, if the choice is between uh, making it 12 without input credit, then I would rather continue with 18% mm. rate as far as restaurants are concerned. So hopefully that uh, that will be the case. And uh, you know, okay. and, and the other thing that you asked about the working capital, uh, I think in the last GST Council meeting they provided a much needed relief of 0.1% GST uh, for the merchant exporters. We have also represented to the government that yeah. that should be extended to manufacturers as well because you can't have a situation where the manufacturers buys the uh, raw material that's at full GST and then uh, yeah. you know the refund is stuck. Hmm. So uh, some, something similar needs to be extended for manufacturer as well. And uh, the export uh, community uh, would expect uh, uh, some uh, serious rethinking on the entire policy uh, right. on this. I mean, so some relief has been given earlier, but a lot more needs to be done. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mani, let me uh, ask you to add to this, if the GST Council is listening, priorities that ought to be taken forward tomorrow. I would say one key priority is to ensure that the compliance challenges don't bog down all business people. And I'm not referring only to SMEs who have been discussed or others. I think everyone after GST has started, all businesses have got bogged down immensely by the you know, compliance processes which are there. And if GST overall has to be a good acceptable reform to everybody, the level of compliance has to be certainly brought down. This could be done by reducing the return filing periodicity. This could also be done by ensuring okay. that many of the details that are already available in the database are not again replicated for the purpose yeah. of GST. Uh, at at at, okay. and we have said this, I believe, before even on uh, your program, 
that if GST has to become acceptable, people should see some benefits out of it. Now, today what is happening is all businesses, irrespective of you know who they are, are seeing that their compliance mm -hmm. burden has shot up because of a monthly return, especially for service providers who yeah. have moved from filing two returns a year to as many number of returns as they have branches in states. So if the compliance processes right. are addressed by the GST Council, uh, I believe businesses as yeah. a whole will be delighted. Okay, businesses as a whole will be delighted if the burden of compliance is brought down further. Let me end then by asking Hari and Dinesh Kalambar. You know, the politics around GST is now intensifying. We've seen uh, protests today in Assam, in Guwahati, where the council is meeting. Uh, Hari, uh, are you concerned now that politics could perhaps derail what has so far uh, been a very, very smooth process within the GST council? I'm not surprised because politics is in the air because of all the elections in the states. You know. But I don't believe as far as council meeting is concerned that posturing will lead to any kind yeah. of disruption in the council. Council has been doing pretty well, has been a pretty good consensus in the council, and I'm quite confident that the finance minister will still manage the meetings in the manner he's been managing so well. You know. okay. coming, coming to compliance, I just yeah. want to make a point. While we all agree that there is pain in compliance, but let me tell you, if it's going to be quarterly for all, it's going to be a disaster, and if it's going to be transaction. And GSTN couldn't handle monthly. Uh. Just imagine if you do quarterly. We are talking of 900 core transactions being processed in a quarter. Hmm. It won't work. So I think we'll have to be careful about what is the solution for ease of compliance. Okay. It can't be a knee-jerk reaction of just making it quarterly. Okay. You probably defer it for some time till people settle down. No? Okay. The issue is not about electronic matching being a problem for clients. It's about the settlement and the stability of the system. You know? So I Fair don't think point. we should do something which is knee-jerk, knee which will only okay. create another chaos. You know? Okay, Dinesh Kanabar, respond to that. Uh, think it through, don't do anything knee-jerk. And do you believe that politics could, in fact, upstage what has so far been a consensual uh, move within the GST Council? I would actually agree with Hari. Uh, if you go back and say that uh, one of the important issues which people are looking at is, say, the 28% 20 per rate bucket. Mm -hmm. And that was agreed to by the council itself, and everybody participated. So it's a joint responsibility for everybody to address as to whether that list should be pruned down from 200 to 20 or whatever else one mm. would want to talk about. And that cannot be a subject matter of politics. I think politics is happening because right. we seem to be in a perpetual uh, uh, election mode, and therefore there needs to be an issue <laughs> for which people need to speak for or against. Uh, I think on the ease of compliance, well, I, would, I would really believe that that's yeah. a very, very critical thing. And I hope the council goes beyond just the rate issue and really addresses the compliance issue. For example, mm. the point which compliance Mani made issue. regarding multiple compliances across the country, etc. Yeah. All right, so ease of compliance as well as rate rationalization and think things through. That's uh, the tax panel's view here to the GST Council. Gentlemen, we will have you all back tomorrow uh, as the GST Council deliberates on some of those crucial issues.